It is indeed a pleasure to have this privilege to play here for you. And we, we intend to give you a very fine program, so just settle back, relax, and enjoy the moment. 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 Good morning. Good morning. One, two, one, two, check, one, two. much news so much news broke yesterday uh regarding the jamal sutherland case and um yeah of course i got my phone up high uh, i just want to hop into it and um shout out to everyone watching on facebook shout out to everyone uh who will be tuning in later you know not necessarily tuning in at uh 7 30 a.m uh, or 7.30 ish did not start on time today uh, good morning everyone on twitch uh, who will be coming in um, I just wanted to, to continue this conversation um, no just needed good morning Justin good morning Nicole you missed yesterday it's okay it's on YouTube it's on Twitch um, it's on Facebook <laughs> um, yeah so good morning uh, just so much to get into Yesterday, of course, on top of my nine to five, on top of meeting with area uh, activists. Good morning, Meg. Uh, meeting with area activists, um, strategizing, planning two times yesterday. Um, just a lot going on. And then in, in the middle of work and everything else, more news breaks regarding this uh, case. So we're just going to hop into it gonna hop right into it right now um we're deviating from the usual formula of weather and all that stuff because it's just this is just this case right here is poised to um it, it should and it, it should make national news but for some reason here in charleston you know before i even switch the view let me do something real quick let me open up some email my email because there are some things we're gonna get i won't say messy but we're gonna get we're gonna start just uh naming things we're gonna start naming things we're gonna start calling out what i perceive to be um what i perceive to be conflicts of interests um interesting players in this whole situation and um i just want to preface things by saying that uh, i am not an investigator i am not an investigative journalist um, but uh, because I have friends who are skilled, because I have friends who um, who are either journalists or just really, really good at doing doing their job, I'm relying on a lot of information from them, uh, trusted sources. But we're just gonna have to call some things out. And if I step on some toes, as always, feel free, anyone, feel free to reach out um, and let me know. Hey, you got this wrong. Keep me honest. I don't mind accountability. <clears throat> Excuse me, accountability. I'm looking for a couple of, yeah, here we go. Attachments before I switch the screen. I don't want y'all seeing all my business before I switch the screen. Okay, boom. All right, so let's go over. Let's go over to what I want y'all to see. Let's see. Everything, everybody can hear me okay? Good morning, good morning. Looks like everything's up. I see some signal issues. I'm good. Thumbs up in the chat. If you can see me, you can hear me. Just let me know. See a little signal issues. Not seeing y'all. Pause for a second. Not seeing anyone in the chat. Yep. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Not seeing anyone on Facebook either. So just just making sure. Let me um. Boom. Okay. I'm gonna. All right. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and play this uh, sound here. This was late breaking news. If there's an ad, y'all know how what the drill is. Let me see. But uh, this is uh, breaking news from yesterday. Please have fun. New video reveals what led to the arrest of a man who died just hours later in the Charleston County Jail. 
North Charleston Mayor Keith Summey published the video today after calls from the community to explain what happened to Jamal Sutherland. And tonight we've learned one of the deputies on administrative duty after Sutherland's death is accused of strangling a... This is the part, y'all. This is where we're going to start connecting some dots. This right here. Handcuffed woman at the jail back in 2014. Carter Coyle and Lisa Wiseman are investigating this developing story. Let's start now with Carter. She's at the Charleston County Jail. Carter, this all started when dispatch got a call to a mental health clinic. That's right, and the mayor says when uh, his officers were called to that health clinic, it was absolute chaos. In today's video message from Mayor Summy, he narrated what happened from their perspective, including some 911 calls. Take a listen. You hear a Palmetto staff report that people are in danger, and hear the situation inside Palmetto start to deteriorate. Are you anyone else in danger right now? Several people are in danger right now. Yes, ma'am. What's going on now, Alyssa? Uh, another patient has come to this unit and is trying to... So we're going to break all of this down, why we're hearing this sound specifically, why Summy has come out to make this. We're going to we're going to dissect everything. I just want y'all to hear. If you haven't been caught up, this is what happened yesterday. By other patients. We need that. We need help. Yes, ma'am. So there's two patients that's fighting right now. Several patients are fighting right now. Now, later, police body camera footage shows Jamal Sutherland as he's first arriving at jail. His family says he was clearly having a mental health crisis. You could hear him talking about the Illuminati being after him and elite forces that were trying to get him. Mayor Summy's main message is that his officers were being respectful. They brought Sutherland to jail, and he says he... Uh, it's, I hope y'all can hear this because they have the audio and the journalist talking over the audio, but let's keep going. He was alive when they left him here. The big questions in this case, though, remain. What happened the next morning when Sutherland died? Uh, the video showing how that happened has not been released from the Charleston County Sheriff's Office yet. Sutherland's family and their attorney that they've hired questioned why he was here at all and why he wasn't taken to the hospital. And y'all, just in the last couple of minutes, Charleston County Sheriff's Office tells us that uh, Sheriff Kristen Graziano will be releasing her own statement tomorrow. Live here in North Charleston, Carter Coyle, Live 5 News. All right, Carter, thank you. Mr. Sutherland died just 10 hours after he got to the Charleston County Jail. 10 hours, y'all. I was saying less than 24 hours. He died 10 hours within 10 hours of being in custody at the Al Cannon Detention Center. The solicitor says they were trying to remove him from his cell so he could go to a bond hearing. We know two deputies who were on duty at the time of Mr. Sutherland's death are now working in an administrative capacity. Lisa. So never uh, terminated. Um, I know that there's policies in place. I acknowledged this yesterday. Or I know that Kristen Graziano can't wave a wand and just um, fire people. And, and, and they are also afforded due process. Um, but this happened in January. And um, yeah, they've been on. They've been they've been basically back to work, but in an administrative capacity. So that's duty. Lisa Wiseman is investigating those two deputies for us. And Lisa, one of them has been sued before. A lawsuit that was filed against several sheriff's office employees several years ago accused detention sergeant Lindsay Fickett of strangling, assaulting, and using a taser on a female inmate who had just been locked up at the jail. So history of violence. Um, this is also when this news broke, I became aware. I, I didn't pick up on it if it was reported, if pronouns were reported. We, I knew the names of the officers involved. I posted those names across my social media platforms. Did not know one of them um, was someone who identifies no. identifies as female. Um, and this is this is very disturbing news to know that she has this history of violence. Very disturbing.
That lawsuit alleges that Fickett assaulted a handcuffed woman in front of other deputies back in 2014 after the woman demanded she call a lawyer. It claims Fickett put a gloved hand on her throat and strangled or choked her. The lawsuit also claims Fickett used a taser on the woman for more than seven seconds, something the suit says was, quote, not permitted by law and should not have happened at all. The suit, which was later settled, also accused Fickett of destroying video that recorded the alleged assault. Now, we requested and got Fickett's personnel records, but they don't show any disciplinary action taken against her for the 2014 case. Now, that other deputy who was put on administrative duty after Sutherland's desk is Brian Hullow. He joined the sheriff's office back in 2016. Now, both he and Fickett were each given honors by the sheriff's office last year. Again, we still don't know what role they played during this incident with Sutherland. We have asked Sheriff Kristen Graziano uh, for an interview. Her office declined, but as you heard our Carter Coyle just explain to us, she is expected to release a statement there tomorrow. The FBI is aware of Sutherland. Just for reference, this was yesterday. This was uh, yesterday evening's news. Sutherland's death, but they won't say whether or not they're investigating it. In the newsroom, Lisa Wiseman, Live 5 News. All right, thank you, Lisa. Those deputies could be charged in connection with Sutherland's death. The solicitor is set to announce possible charges next month. Okay, so uh, there was a lot to unpack there. Uh, I'm going to switch camera angles real quick. There was a lot to unpack there, and uh, good morning. Um, just so y'all won't be distracted, I'm wearing bands in my mouth, <laughs> so don't be distracted. Um, also, I've lost a few nails, uh, <laughs> so just get that out the way. Um, uh, there's a lot to unpack there on a serious note. So what we saw yesterday, again, as I'm going through the course of the day, talking to um, you know area pe area organizers who want to engage in this issue um, thoughtfully. What what I what we saw was now that the mayor of Charleston, and we're going to play his statement now, the mayor, excuse me, the mayor of North Charleston coming out and getting ahead of uh, those in leadership at Al Cannon. So you see Mayor Summy letting you know that his officers who responded to the call, the distress call from the Palmetto um, Mental Health Facility, right? Uh, the Palmetto Low Country, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the name a little bit uh, backwards, but you get what I'm saying. So the, his officers, North Charleston police officers responded to the calls from the mental health facility where Jamal Sutherland was being housed. And also according to his family, this was a, this was a facility where he had history. Um, he, this was not his first time there. Right. Uh, of course, you hear the audio being released also from the 911 call. Uh, so you see the audio being released from North Charleston, uh, city of North Charleston made sure that the audio was released of the 911 call that does definitely um, uh, communicate to us that there was a struggle. There was uh, a, um, there was some violence going on at the mental health facility. Um, more on that later uh, or why that might have occurred. Right. Those what, what what are those conditions like? To, to cause that or what what attributed to that situation or that melee um and then you also see you see um mayor summy not only walk you through hey this is what our 911 call sounded like this this is how our officers responded this is how but the the exclamation point i would say is he pretty much says look this is how we left him with y'all and what that communicates to me is that this tape from the actual Al Cannon Detention Center, this tape must be really bad. If you've got Mayor Summy coming out ahead of Graziano, now Graziano did, uh, she did um, make a statement. Um, she did at least make a written statement about what was going on, uh, but she did, has not come out and publicly made any type of verbal statement about this case. Right. And so for Mayor Sumney, I think to get out ahead of the of uh, get out ahead of the Al Cannon staff and leadership to me indicates that this tape must be very, very, very bad. OK, let's go, go ahead. I'm going to switch back over. And thank you all for tuning in for those who just came. Um, yeah, it felt like he's he. Uh, so, Nicole, you said that felt like, uh, hey, he was alive when we get, when our guys left him. Absolutely. He literally almost says that. Right. So let's get into the video now. We have 
other people covering it, posting courier, person, posting courier reposted it, but. I speak to you about the death of Jamal. Let's watch it. It is with great sadness that I speak to you about the death of Jamal Sutherland. Like many of you, I have seen the recent news coverage and believe it is in the community's best interest to understand what happened. While the city's involvement ended the day prior to Jamal's passing, I can at least shed light on the city of North Charleston's interactions. Jamal. Very, very deliberate language. And again, yeah, he's out to, he's getting out ahead and say, Hey, the city, when the city had custody of this person, we follow all protocol. Um, I don't agree with, uh, Mayor Sami on, on a, a myriad of things. Um, I'm just acknowledging something y'all. This is savvy politician play. This is savvy politician play right here. But I will say this, um, there's still questions, right? That's one thing, like what, what, what type of services are in place? There's still questions. Let me just let it rock. Let me just let it rock, because this is quite long. All died at the Charleston County Jail on January the 5th, 2021 a day after North Charleston released him into the custody of the Sheriff's Department. I know that Sheriff Graziano is reviewing her staff's involvement. North Charleston's review is obviously centered on the actions of the North Charleston police officers. Our police department's encounter with Jamal ended the previous day when we turned him over safe to the jail staff. Nonetheless, I want the people of North Charleston to see how our officers treated Jamal and understand why he was taken into custody. Charleston County 911 dispatched officers from our department to Palmetto Behavioral Health on the evening of January 4th. Officers were told that a large scale fight had erupted among patients and staff and that staff urgently needed help from law enforcement. Good question. Good I question. want you to hear this for yourself so you can understand Is the why county? North Charleston Police Department responded. Here are the first moments of the call made to dispatch. What this also do, does, though, y'all, is it makes Jamal um, appear to be extraordinarily violent. Um, look, people have, there, there are all types of mental health conditions. There are all types of mental health, um, uh, mental health symptoms and all of that, right? There are all types of, of, of um, types of, of medical conditions those who are suffering from mental health illness have. Um, this to me is not unusual. Yes. And I'm speaking as a person that has familiarity with this type of institution, personal, personal mental health issues myself. This is not unusual to hear this type of, of, um, disturbance at a facility, but I have a fear that this is going to be used to paint Jamal. It already has. We've seen with the Brian Hicks piece. Now the, um, the, the, the pathologist that was engaged is saying that, uh, or, or Scarlett Wilson suggested the solicitor, Scarlett Wilson su suggested that, oh, the medication might've played a role in his death. And like, you already see Jamal's mental health, um, his mental illness, being used and weaponized against him. So I do think that this was questionable to use so much of this audio from the Palmetto um, mental health facility. Now one. Hey, there you are. Hey, it's 2777 Spicer Drive, North Charleston, 29405. Tell me exactly what happened. Uh, we have uh, committed patients in a, the a psychiatric hospital. One has assaulted several patients and they're, they're asking to press charges and now he's trying to assault more people. In a later clip, you hear Palmetto staff report that people are in danger and hear the situation inside Palmetto start to deteriorate. Are you anyone else in danger right now? Several people are in danger right now. Yes, ma'am. What's going on now, Alyssa? Uh, another patient has come to this unit and is trying to fight other patients. We need that. We need help. Yes, ma'am. So it's two patients. 
So, um, again, this is where I'm, I kind of prefaced this earlier about like there's certain things that I'm going to I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to pose them as questions. I'm going to try to um, be as responsible as possible because this is a sensitive issue. I said this yesterday and I, and I should have led off with this today. Um, this is not easy for me to listen to. This is not easy for me, for me to engage with um, beyond me just being a black person, um, a black person who has um, mental health issues herself. It really is tough to even just like unpack this whole situation. So I can only imagine how tough this is for the Sutherland family to have other voices weigh in on this case. Um, because there's a lack of nuance, but because there is a lack of, of, of thoughtful, uh, thoughtful conversation about this situ about this incident i feel compelled to, to create this content and to to dissect it but i do want to say that um i don't do this without thinking of the family um yeah this is this is the audio this is the key hey good morning kia this is audio from this is what uh, this is mayor summy and thank you johnny james um on twitch this is mayor summy his proactive stance to make sure to get out in front He's making sure to get out in front of, of the sheriff's office and say, hey, this is what happened. This is why we arrested him. The, he's also, Mayor Sumney, in, in, in disclosing this audio, the 911 call audio and all that, he's also trying to make the case that, no, we picked him up. Us picking him up and taking him to the jail was the right thing to do. He's also making that argument by releasing this audio and the video. I want to kind of fast forward because we hear more tussle. It's not it's not captioned. Um it's more tussle dispatch audio, right? And then we're gonna talk. Somebody is just breaking down the whole chain of custody type of deal right here. Let's let's try to move forward. We probably need MF. Given the mass fight that had just occurred inside Palmetto, leaving Jamal at Palmetto or taking. Okay, Meek McPherson on, on Facebook. I just want to uh, read your comment real quick. You said, I'm not blaming uh, the staff at the mental health professional. Um, as the mental health professional, I understand situations like this all too well, but I would like to know what was the staff's procedures and training that played a part. Absolutely. Um, Meek, thank you for your comments because uh, I had this conversation with a friend last night. Uh, what we also from some other sources allegedly, there may have been some staffing issues at this mental health facility. So there may have been some staffing issues, there may have been some resource issues, but the procedures is really what I wanna know. I wanna know, yeah, how were, how were these, how were these, um, these patients housed? Were the proper populations uh, separated, right? Those who had sensitivity maybe to, to noise and, and other things, those who can be agitated, those who are prone to outbursts, were they, um, put in the proper places places within the facility there are a lot of questions about that mental health facility because they lost control um and i'm not and i'm not blaming them either i know their job is tough right so i'm i'm so not i just want to know more about hey what, what what was going on and then the other other previous question on twitch was well who runs the facility is this a county is this a county run facility is it a state run facility? There's a lot of questions here. Looking at Twitch again. Good morning, Evelyn. Um, uh, and then uh, Kia, you wrote while Summy went in um, on this heavily produced information. Yeah, but 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 and Kia is very savvy. And and as I've said yesterday, <laughs> I've said on the phone, I've said yesterday, me and, and Cliff Albright from Black Voters Matter said it. The tape must be bad for everyone to be scrambling for 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 the opinions columns. I don't know what Brian Hicks is, but he's not. On, <clears throat> he's not on he's not on the law enforcement beat for them to bring in brian hicks for a city council to be calling all area leaders for reggie burris to be calling uh all area leaders and all like this must be bad it must be bad you've got even conservative news outlets here locally saying that suggesting as much as well um and a lot of time and a lot too people want to see outburst they want to relive what happened last summer that's not going to happen y'all um but some people are trying to watch a, a train wreck but this must be bad if Summy is doing this taking him to some other unsecured facility was not a safe option for patients or staff north charleston police had a responsibility to deliver jamal safely from palmetto to the jail i don't think that's accurate 
I don't think that's accurate. I don't think jail is where you bring, first of all, I don't believe in jails, period. But jail is definitely not a place for those suffering from mental health, um, Ill, mental illness and those in distress. You don't you don't send a person with a broken leg. Uh, let's say there's a person who's being violent and they had a broken leg, a broken arm, but they're also being, you know, having an outburst or, or you know, demonstrating, you know, behavior where they might cause a harm to other people. You don't bring them to you don't bring them to, to jail. Right. You, you get them care. You don't bring people in mental health distress to jail, period. That is exactly what they did. Prior to transporting Jamal to jail, our officers took the time to ask all the questions that you would want them to ask. They talked to Palmetto's behavioral staff to understand exactly what had happened. That Jamal guy tried to come across the unit, so we had a code with him. We got him kind of like calmed down, and then lo and behold, he started punching people on the other unit. Yeah. So again, I'm gonna fast forward. Sami is making sure that they, and I also want to say this, right? It, it isn't lost on me that when they want to release dash cam, body cam, 911 audio, when they want to release that stuff, oh, they'll find a way to release that stuff, right? When it can exonerate the cops or exonerate the city of of, of North Charleston or or you know insert you know powerful person X, when they want to release shit. Without old sled, uh, you know, old independent. I thought there were a bunch of investigations going on. I thought there were, I thought there was internal, external investigations going on. So it's not lost on me too. We're going to fast forward this part. This is the cops asking questions. We don't know what they've redacted. We don't know. This is the other part. We don't know what they've redacted. We don't know what they, they left in, put in, uh, not put in, but you don't know what is missing from this, um, from what they release. These, these are, this is not raw footage, right? So, um, I, I get it. The cops asked questions. The cops weren't total assholes. <laughs> Yay. Cops weren't total assholes. They did their job, right? They are, they're supposed to serve and protect, right? So they are talking to the staff. The staff is saying, Hey, this is what happened. Yada, yada, yada. Um, not yada, yada, yada. I invite you all to, to go back and watch this in a uh, complete video. Um, but I want to get to the part where Jamal is brought to the jail. Um, I want to get to that part and I want to hear Summy kind of break this down a little bit and it's they definitely got two camera angles this was highly produced to Kia's point bare minimum Evelyn bare minimum absolutely to Kia's point this is highly produced two camera angles at least um Meek uh, McPherson you say on Facebook mental health facilities are full funding is low and the pay is lower. Unfortunately, we have few places to place people like Mr. Sutherland. And that's heartbreaking. Thank you, Meek, for chiming in on Facebook. Thank you. That's heartbreaking. Facilities on site for inmates. In fact, you will see in the next clip that a jail nurse was already in the intake area at the time our officers brought Jamal in. Let go! Relax. Let go of me! All right, okay. Now! This is so heartbreaking to watch. I just got to keep saying it. It's just, it's, it's so heartbreaking to watch this, this young man. Less than 10 hours, y'all, or 10 hours. He was dead 10 hours from this time. Like, my heart breaks. And jail is not the place. Look how cold and, 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 and just, this is not the place. Okay. I'm nobody's talking but God, but the Illuminati is after me because I'm talented. Something you not. And I feel like the release of this video without mentioning how, how, you know, how distressing this, this footage is like the, the mayor of North Charleston is making sure that he's, He's in the clear, that his cops are in the clear, um, but not really, like, where's the care for Jamal? And I think this is the larger point, too, like, as the as Sheriff Graziano releases statements about, oh, the family's wishes and the care for the family, care for the family. Like, what's, what's really missing is real care. And where was the care for Jamal? If you cared about the family so much, 
right? And I'm not I'm not placing direct blame at Christian Graziano for the outcomes. This is and I want to make that clear too. I'm not blaming Christian Graziano for this really unfortunate and devastating outcome, this tragic outcome. I am holding her accountable to make to answer questions, whether this is your day one or day two, this is the nature of the job. This is this is this is what you this is what you ran for. This is this is what it is. And I want to say instead of you trying to put the family out there as a human shield, we we need questions answered and you should have ran out, you should have ran to the mic and you should have ran, you should have did something to demonstrate to us that no, this is not right. This is not going to happen ever again no more. And we didn't get that. We got defensiveness. And everyone's trying to cover their asses right now. But no one's really showing me how much you really care about this man who's clearly having a psychotic break, right? Um, Justin, you said, yeah, he's begging for medicine. He actually, and that's the other part. He's asking for, for medical attention. He's asking for medical attention. And all he's getting is, is, is two fingers in his chest pressed against some cinder block wall, right? Yes, Nicole, about transparency, Nicole on Twitch. Yes. Thank you. It's a real serious matter. The elite been watching me. They probably flying over this fucking jet right stay, now. You gotta stay by the wall, man. Please. Have fun. Thank you. You'll see that when our officers last had Jamal in sight, he was healthy and being accompanied. I wouldn't have released this if I was the. the this is the. This is the. Um. Where again, I think this is, this is, if you're going to release anything, release how he lost his life, not him literally fight. Cause to me, this feels like he's fighting for help. He's fighting for his life. Release the tape of what your officers did. Like, I want to know that information. I just, this is heartbreaking to, to listen to and watch. And by a nurse as he went into the jail. <laughs> He's not healthy. Exa exactly, right? Okay, so uh, Evelyn on Twitch just made a really good point. The, you hear Summy saying, you see that he's healthy. You, no, we see that he's not healthy. Kia and Evelyn, he's not healthy. He is not healthy. What part of, what part of screaming about the Illuminati denotes health? <laughs> like, what? what? It's someone asking, literally, explicitly asking for medication. How is that healthy? We got, we've got mental health all fucked up in this country, in this region. We've got this all messed up. Like, come on. It brings me sorrow to know that Jamal passed away yeah, right. the following day on January the 5th. But I am relieved that video and audio exist to let us see the respect and patience that North Charleston police officers displayed that night. While Jamal's family continues to grieve his passing, I hope our recordings of the interaction gives the family and the community confidence in the way we conducted ourselves. The only confidence we got is in the fact that you're going to make sure you, you save your behind. So I'm going to hop over. So we listened tonight. We watched the Live 5 News clip and coverage of it, which is the most comprehensive as of yesterday in terms of video. Um... And I'm um, going to hop into the Post and Courier. Um, so this is the, I believe, the, uh, so I, it's on the front page of the Post and Courier, y'all. It's, um, they put a picture of Summy, a color photo of Summy, linking to the story here. Um, I prefer it, the digital edition, because it's, uh, so it did make it to the front page, which was, I don't want to see reassuring, but it was whatever. Let me look at chat, the chat on um, Twitch. Uh, Evelyn said the bar is so fucking low. The fact that the police didn't beat him isn't compassionate care. Exactly. The bar is, is in hell. The bar is in hell. Compassionate care. Right? Nicole, you mentioned he's begging for medicine. Absolutely. Kia, you said he's still not explaining why he's dead. And he's trying to, Kia, he's trying to distance himself. He said, look, we dropped him off. The chain of custody ended there. It's on the, it's on the county jail now. Um, it brings up more questions. Exactly. I let off this morning saying that I've got more questions, right? So, okay, let me see. I think that this is the Gregory. Yes. Yeah, so this is the Gregory E story here. I'm going to blow this up. I'm going to blow this up a little bit bigger so we can see it. 
and read it again heartbreaking all right so this was written 14 hours ago and that's a still from the the north charleston police officers body cam again they know when to release body cam when they want to all right city officials have released dispatch audio and body camera video related to the arrest of jamal sutherland a mental health patient who died less than a day after he was jailed in early january mayor keith summy addressed the incident in the city and city police officers role in sutherland's arrest and near in a nearly nine minute video released on may 12th yesterday uh, mayor the mayor's comment uh, comments are intercut with previously undisclosed 911 dispatch audio and body camera footage. While the city's involvement ended the day prior to Jamal's passing, I can at, I can at least yada yada. We already we already listened to Sami say that. Um, but me, let me reiterate this last part that Sami made right here. Our police department's encounter with Jamal ended pre that previous day when we turned him over to the jail safe. Uh, excuse me, the jail staff. Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to kind of slide into, I'm trying to glide to get to some, some more information um, over here on Twitch. What do we see? Uh, all that is, is, it ain't us. Absolutely. Nicole, Summy passed the baton to Graziano and threw her under the bus. I don't Chico the man. Um, definitely. And this is, this is what, okay. <laughs> Let me put my operative hat on. This is why you get out and you claim the narrative, right? This is why let investigation be damned. This is why you, let me tell you something. These, these cops all across the state, Greenville, um, mid, the Midlands, here in the low country, down in Buford, in the low, low, low country. These cops move crooked and crazy and unethical all the time. Sled be covering up for the all kinds of missteps and, 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 and foul shit all the time. If you fuck up, if you fuck up investigation by getting out there and reclaiming the narratives to save your, to at least, even if it's to save your ass, if not to be transparent, it, to save your ass, if you get out there, oh, well, they'll cover up for you. L like, let's just keep it real. You're not going to lose your job by going out there and, 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 and claiming the narrative and making sure you get ahead of this. Kristen Graziano never got ahead of this. Kristen Graziano never got her hand on this. And this was, that that was her biggest mistake no one was calling for her head no one was saying this is your fault shit it was what your second day on the job we get it we get that you were gonna have to untangle a bunch of shit i've said that so many times since election day when she won to, to current day that she's got a lot of mess to untangle for a man that's been in office for who was in place for over 30 years that being said kristen you you could have gotten ahead of this shit you could have gotten ahead of now everybody throwing you under the bus and that's why we, we've been telling you that blue wall shit is bullshit. Plus, you came in, you unseated, you a reformer. You came in, you unseated they phase. So you know, you know ain't nobody gonna look out for you like that, like that. Shit, the first couple of days that uh before she was um in place, you had people defecting, people making statements, uh deputies retiring and shit. Right? So so you, uh, you know that loyalty ain't there. So you got to get you got to get out ahead and, and, and claim the narrative. I know she's in a tough spot. I'm acknowledging that. But that's the fact that remains is that you ran for this tough ass job. It had a lot of, of, of to me, very unattractive, uh, <laughs> very unattractive qualities about this job. It's very difficult to do. Right. Right. And, and, and so but you had to get out ahead of this, but they throwing you under the bus. And, and it's like, how is Summy out here? How is Summy out here with a highly stylized video, two, two perspectives, jump cuts and shit? How is he out here with audio, body cam, this, that, and the third? And yet we, we begging for information from the from the sheriff's department. Come on. All right, so I'm going to keep reading. Summy's video comes a day after the Ninth Circuit solicitor, Charlotte, Scarlett Wilson, issued a statement about the case. Wilson is reviewing an independent investigation by SLED. Not by, we ain't going to get into that. Independent investigation by SLED. And expects to decide by the end of June whether to file criminal charges in connection with Sutherland's death. Sutherland was declared dead at 10.30 a.m. On, on January 5th. The county jail in North Charleston, um, according to the coroner's office, uh, he'd been there less than a day. Y'all, he'd been there 10 hours. 
after he left the Palmetto Low Country Behavioral uh, Health Center. All right, Captain Roger Antonio, uh, a Charleston Sheriff's, uh, Sheriff's Office spokesperson, spokesman says uh, that his agency had no comment on the video. Y'all got to get it together. How y'all don't got comment yet? A pet, now, this is the bullshit from yesterday. A pathologist declared that Sutherland's manner of death was undetermined. Bullshit. Bullshit. Dude was, the dude was in there walking and talking. The, we can't, I can't attest to his health, right? Because to me, he was not healthy. I can't eyeball his health. We do know he was able to, to bear weight and to walk on his own, you know, walk on, under his own strength. We know that much. So to go from that condition that we did visibly see to dead in 10 hours, I don't think it's undetermined. I don't, I don't get that undetermined. Something caused that. Um, in his report, the pathologist theorized emphasis on that word, y'all. I guess maybe that's what pathologists do. Pathologists theorized that a prescription drug may have contributed. Like, look at this bullshit may have contributed to, uh, to Sutherland's, um, it says died. Contributed to Sutherland's death, I guess. But his report was inconclusive, according to Wilson's statement. How? Y'all, y'all have had since January. Since January. And I'm going to just say, I'm going to throw this bomb in here right in the middle. The fact that the fact that the family's attorney did not call for an independent autopsy. This came up last night on a call. Shout out to uh, Josh. Um from Low Country, um, Low Country Action Committee. I hope I didn't butcher that. Uh, shout out to Josh and a number of people who were on a call last night who were like, yo, did they have an independent autopsy? Did they have an independent investigation? Nope. Quadro mentioned that as well. Nope. So that was fucked up on the, on the, on the family attorney's part. Cause now you got this pathologist telling you, oh, well, I think he was on prescription medication. I think that's what, no, no. Yeah, a, a young, a young, a relatively young, exactly Kia. It's George, it's George, uh, Chico the man, it's George Floyd all, all over again. You don't just drop dead. Like, get out of here. All right, so this, now they're saying his prescription medication. Right, right, right. Sutherland was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia in his teens. Right. According to North Charleston um, police, the incident report, officers will call shortly after 7 p.m. We got that already. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything in Gregory's reporting, uh, that, uh, gives you any more. He's literally just outlining what some he put on video commotion, um, talking, uh, huh, uh, huh. no. So yeah, he's just, they're just outlining it. And then they've linked, they linked their, their, their copy of the Sami video here, but they're not adding anything to the story. So, and, and you got scoop. I don't know. If, I don't know if you can scoop your colleague, but Brian Hicks is the one that dropped all, all, all the bombs. Right. So that's one. Let me see where else I want to go with this. Right. No, I don't want to go there. Wanted to go there. So now I want to make a hard turn. I want to make a hard turn. <laughs> I want to make a hard turn to who's got the case. Now, this is where I'm going to make some people mad. I'm going to make some people mad. But I don't, I, I just, so to me, um, l l let's kind of just back up real quick. I'm going to let this rock. Yep, I'm being messy. I'm going to let this rock real quick. But let me, um, let me just say this. You've got everyone out here scrambling to cover their ass and i think little care and attention is being paid to the family including from the family's lawyer now this is where at the beginning of the beginning of the live stream i said that this is where it could kind of get look i got questions i got question on who's really who's really in control i've got questions as to who this this is mark pepper y'all this is the lawyer in charge of the family's case i've got questions about the interests personal interest of Mark Pepper and what to me appears to be him openly and not even like openly coordinating with law enforcement. We learned yesterday that I believe the mediation, uh, mediation already started. So the family's already working toward some sort of uh, settlement. I don't know what that means. If there's any room for a civil case, if they settle, 
Um, it sounds like to me, this rush to have the family enter into mediation, the county already came out yesterday, according to Brian Hicks's reporting, that the county saying, oh, we got a million dollar cap. We, that's all we're going to give is a million, right? So you've got that type of hedging. Then you've got the lawyer here, Mark Pepper, right? Oh, sorry, Kia. You've got Mark. And look, I'm just keeping it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting shit out there. It is what it is. It is what it is. Um, if anyone is worrying about what drug it was, it was cocaine. Um, if, if anyone, this story from 2017, it was updated in September 2020, though. But if anyone want to know what the drug was, it was cocaine. Um, and he he avoided any kind of charges, right? Um, let me just go to what I was. Let me just go ahead and and and, and, and go and continue on what I was going with this. Um, there's just something going on with the family being rushed into mediation with there not being any video of the actual death being, uh, either, either, um, I guess the family that has seen it, but the public has not, um, the family or people on speaking on behalf of the family coming out and say, well, the family doesn't want the public to see it. That's really weird. That's really unusual for a family to say, we don't want the public to see the video. That's really peculiar. So it made me think, and not just me, some other folks that I'm in community with, made me think about, well, what, who is, who is advising this family? And what, ha what has happened is that, what has happened is that there's a wall around the family, a wall of gatekeepers around the family. And we've got to have, as, a bla as black people in Charleston, we've got to start having some real conversations about like the David Ehlers and the Mark Peppers who are in close proximity to us who have, you know, who we've got cousins, we got cousins, we got friends who work, work for these firms, right? We've got to start asking some critical questions about some of these, these white men who love to play friend to us, but are double dipping and double dealing. And I, I am, I'm, I suspect, allegedly, I suspect that Mark Pepper is acting more in the interest of the law enforcement community than he is for the family. To me, to me, I think it's really difficult. Hold on. It's really difficult for me to entrust someone who's come out and endorsed Scarlett Wilson, the solicitor, the current solicitor who's still, I don't know, I'm not sure, it's not clear, we think it's his medication, we, we were trying to, I think someone who's endorsed Scarlett Wilson and you're representing the family, I, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what that, what that means. And then... Okay, now Mark is not on here, but again, we need to have a conversation, black people, we need to have a conversation about being complicit in supporting someone who's never, who's never acted in the best interest of black people. We've got to talk about how, why there's so many, not, not black MAGA over here, but why there's so many black lawyers doing the bidding of someone who will uh, who will prosecute us to the fullest extent of the law right and why we didn't rally behind a ben poke who had a pro more progressive fi vision for the solicitor's office we got to talk about that look at wearing evelyn you see your boy wearing down here shade is down here too right and the, one of the, the biggest developer in the motherfucker right here the biggest developer Biggest developer in Charleston, right here, Mayor Riley. Orville Red and gentrification. <laughs> I don't know what I called him before. Orville Red and something. Um, I had a nice little nickname for him. All right. We got to talk about. We got to talk about this. This Al Cannon, y'all, looking like the Crypt Keeper. And we got, you know, we got MAGA over here. We got Steve Bannon's bestie right here. We got Trump's Trump's mascot right here. We got to talk about how this person is allowed to defend the family or has gotten himself because because of his because of his relationship 
because of his relationship to black people, to the black community, right? How he's able to get in there and secure this case, right? When you're very, very cozy with people who have caused so much pain and trauma in the black community. We don't do this enough. We don't vet the people that look now we can't be giving out uh, 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 cookout plates to everybody who just can, can rhyme a few bars of outcast, you know, like we, we gotta, we gotta chill out with, with, Oh, you know, he, he can, he'll come and he'll support the AKAs at their banquet and, and, and become a, a sponsor at our events. We got, we got to chill out and ask some critical questions because if you stand alongside, let alone black MAGA right here, this, this messy, this messiness here, this Trump sympathizer here, this, this enemy of the people, right? This Judas, not only are you right here, you right next to this dude who's, who's brought so much devastation to black people. And this ain't no secret. This is, this is out. You took these pictures, Mark. You posed for these pictures. But you out here defending the family. Right? Right? We got some, we got some questions. And it, it does not make any sense. The other point I want to make, because I know I'm being messy. But oh, well, I'm sure somebody will use a mugshot of mine. Oh, yeah. this remember Y'all remember when I live streamed one evening and it was the United Front? Y'all remember this? When I live, when I, um, when I live stream, stream back, yup, this was March. Remember, it was, it was a panel and it was so dry. It was so dry. And I forgot Mark was on that panel. Right? It's, 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 it's interesting how Mark is always in the conversation about criminal justice. Mark is always in the conversation about criminal justice. It's interesting to me. Scarlett, Luther, Graziano, Colin don't count. And then you got this dude from SLED. I can't remember his name, right? Interesting. Interesting. Um, let me see where I wanted to go. I wanted to also keep talking about this, but um, honestly, it's it's just a lot. I want to go back to this again. Shout out to Jessica who put me onto this series. I'm going to be reaching out. I said this before, but I'm going to do it today. I'm going to reach out to Radley Balco, um, this columnist, and see whether or not he'll be able to, maybe if I can't get him live, maybe record, maybe that even be the best thing to do is to record it and then play it. Um, but I'd rather do it live if we can so y'all can ask questions and, and engage with it. But we're going to have a conversation about um, SLED and how their involvement with this case is tricky as well. Let me go back to the chat. Um, see what y'all was um, see what y'all was saying. Key, you saying you're so right about Mark and Ayler. I always wondered why it was when uh, you went to things downtown. The wristband says David Ayler. Yep. If you get a DUI and that's the thing. So Kia, they position themselves to be there. They position themselves to be there when shit goes down. Like they, they create this, they create this, um, they just create these relationships. And look, it's not all bad relationships. Like they've sponsored events of, of family members of mine. They've sponsored events of people I love. And, and yeah, y'all, I mean, yeah, law, law firm sponsorship. We get it right they're trying to it's a marketing tool it's, it's it's a marketing tool right we get it um but but we have to start talking about like these men are making enormous amounts of money they're able to maintain and build wealth by profiting off of black pain and trauma and if, if, if i've never said anything i've said this one thing consistently since i've taken to either live streams or to, to instagram is that we as black people here we don't interrogate these power structures thoroughly enough and so we just accept think when someone is nice to us or throws is a couple of favors we we take that personal feeling that personal relationship and have it inform our politics and you can't afford to do that that's the same thing that happened with Kristen graziano right i might feel a way about her personally that can't that can't um that can't uh, influence the way I cover her and how I hold her accountable. And we, we've got to stop with this. That's why when you see cops handing out boxes of bread and bananas, you know, doing mutual aid, you should be scratching your head. Like, why are the cops doing mutual aid at Hawk Gap? on John's Island. Why are cops at all these black owned establishments like the Blue Note Bistro in North Charleston? Why are cops so hell bent on doing mutual aid? Why are they so hell bent on having ice cream trucks and ice cream trucks in, in, in summer camps? Right? 
right? Trying to be cool at Royal American. They be at Royal American. Yeah, like it's just it's really it's really um crazy. Let me see what Evelyn wrote earlier. Evelyn, you said this is uh petty, um, but that mugshot expression just screams. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he was smug as fuck. He was smug as fuck in that mugshot. If I get arrested for like protests, I'll be smug in my in my mugshot. If I get a if I get busted for cocaine, oh, I'm 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 not gonna be I I ain't gonna be skinning and grinning. It, it's not petty. It's not petty. I think that's an astute observation. Johnny James, you said no shade to the family, but yeah, um, no, I, I think they were preyed upon. I think they were preyed. And I think there are members of the black community who delivered the family to Mark Pepper, Johnny James, just to your point. And, and, and this is where we got to stop. Look, y'all got, I know y'all, <laughs> I know lawyers got to make money, but I, I have no doubt that lawyers can find a way to make money without, without um doing stuff like stuff like this i think that i think um all, all i know is that they're already entering the mediation without even the film being released and there's no way you can tell me that the family came to the conclusion themselves that they didn't want to release that video you can't tell me that they just said you know what releasing this video would be bad for us but someone in that camp is telling them, if you release this video, it's going to be bad for your case and they're not going to play ball. I, I can already hear the bullshit that that family was probably fed and they probably felt they didn't have any options. Right. And that's the let me switch camera angles. Let me switch camera angles. And again, don't be distracted by my lack of nails or my bands. <laughs> um, but on a serious note. This what's happening with the Sutherland family feels so stereotypically Charleston. Charleston has a way of insulating you and making you feel isolated, making you feel alone, making you feel like you don't have many options because of like what 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 gets attention and what doesn't like like so. I can only imagine like what the family might have been dealing with when trying to figure out, okay, what's the best, what's the best way through this? And I, I, I have no doubt that this, that Scarlett Wilson, who said in other reporting, oh, I made myself available to the family. Kristen Graziano, her, re, her refrain is, her constant refrain is, oh, I made myself available to the family. They're coming off as if they're really acting in the best interest of the family. And the family had had thoughtful representation that wasn't so cozy with cops. They would know, well, you know what? We're actually suing y'all. So us having access to you and 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 listening to your your assurances and and being close to y'all that actually is not good for our case there's a conflict there and, and if they had really good legal representation someone would have said you know what we need to keep our distance from law enforcement it's not a desire to 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 be in close community with them and i just i just really on top of immeasurable grief yes d absolutely right um it, it's just it, it it really to me it feels as if their legal representation um really let them down and this is a, this is a miscarriage of justice and this oh this is the point i wanted to make when i switch right and key i'm about to read your comment um on twitch this is what i wanted to say what 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 the what appears that mark pepper and those who are advising the family and also from the rhetoric from Christian Graziano, the rhetoric from the solicitor's office on and on and on. It seems as if they've, they've, they're doing this thing where they're, they're, they're counting on the, the public not to be able to make a distinction, right? Make this key distinction. Y'all are engaged in a civil situation, right? Now the solicitor has yet to say whether or not criminal charges will be filed. That, that actually took a backseat, which is unfortunate, right? But y'all are discussing civil. People like myself, Quadro, Fernando, Marcus, we're talking about the, the, the criminal justice system. And so when they continuously say, hey, the family's interest, the family wants this, that's cool what the family wants. You keep working on what the family wants. I'm going to let you know that this is, a, this is a systemic and structural issue that we're talking about. And, and this is why I made this point yesterday. Y'all keep putting this family out here and saying, oh, the family, the family. Oh, the family, the family. If you cared about the family, their son wouldn't be dead. Just saying that. If you cared about the family, you would have released the tape because you did everything right, right, Summy? Y'all did everything right, right? 
easy peasy. He he was cool, right? Right? If you really cared about the family, you'd be trying to fight for justice. If you really cared about the family, you'd be fighting for justice. And you wouldn't be trying to do all of this this thing behind the scenes, working in concert with, uh, allegedly working in concert with uh, Scarlett Wilson, allegedly working in concert with perhaps the, the, the city of Charleston, since they, city of North Charleston, since they, they run around scrambling, trying to have closed door meetings and all this other shit, right? Same thing here in Charleston as well, right? Right, scrambling because this video might get leaked. This video might get released, right? Which I don't even know how much of that is true now because there's so many different voices in here, but it sounds like the video might be released. And, and Sami releasing his part of the video is interesting too. So we'll see. But um, no, I, 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 we have to make the distinction between civ the civil matter, which is over there. Y'all take care of the civil matter and the justice system. And you're not gonna, you're not gonna, um, you're not gonna play me into thinking that I can't stand up against these forms of oppression. And they love doing this. All you're violating this. They again, they did this with Walter Scott's mom. They paraded her out. Oh, we don't want, we don't want. That's fine. That's fine. Love you. God rest your soul. But this is not about just your son. This is about a system. This is about a big, a, a glaring issue with this system, with sled and how they cover up shit. That's what you know. Let, let me let me go back to that. So, the article that I had up uh, again, we already recovered. We already covered some of this before, right? So, <clears throat> back in 2015, this uh, columnist Radley Balco started writing about Sled. It was some really interesting comments. I'm just gonna read a little bit from this. At first, so he thought, let me just read the first two paragraphs, all right? Back in 2015, I wrote a four-part a four part series on policing in South Carolina. Let me blow this up. This is the Washington Post, y'all. On policing in South Carolina, one of the central themes of the series was a state pol a police agency called South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, or SLED. This is generally considered the most elite police agency in the state. It participates in drug investigations, corruption investigations, and perhaps the most importantly, when there's an officer involved shooting. Uh, it is SLED that comes to investigate, to investigate whatever, right? At first blush, this seems to be a decent system, right? Better than most. Having an outside police agency investigate shootings by cops is certainly preferable to handling such investigations internally. But my reporting for the series, I found SLED isn't as independent and or elite as or and elite as an agency as it's portrayed. SLED is staffed with officers who come from other police agencies across the state. And often SLED excuse me, and often SLED agents are assigned to investigate their former colleagues, y'all. A practice which critics in South Carolina told me means that in truth, the agency isn't objective or independent at all. I'm going to stop that right there, right? I'm going to stop that right there. So, so, so knowing all of these things are at play right now to obscure the detail, to obscure the facts and keep us from knowing what really happened to Jamal Sutherland, you know, you would need a lawyer in place that would know that, right? If you're a lawyer worth your salt, you'd know how SLED gets down, you know what SLED's about, and you'd be protecting the interests of the family, knowing how corrupt it is, right? How many times I said this, um, I said this last night on a call. How many times and I'll say, mm, let's say the recent year and a half, two years, have let me try to find it, have um our have our um a state, either state level or local law enforcement, sheriff's departments. How often have they been investigated or they've been like profiled by a national outlet or something like that? How many times y'all we've seen John Oliver, uh, the post and courier has been writing on uh, corruption with the sheriff's department. Let me just type it in and see what happens. South Carolina. Sure. Oh no, not the association. I don't know. Not the associated. Let's, let's hit news. Right. How many times? So this is part of the, I think this is part of the, um, AB books is on it. So, you know, it's investigative. So how many times have like our sheriff's offices, our SROs, um, you name them and just members of law enforcement, all of this sled, all of the, these agencies have gotten 
attention from outside of the state about how crazy things are here, right? Right? So your lawyer is going to need to know that, oh, shit, I've got, we've got an opportunity. We got to get justice for Jamal. We got to get justice for the Sutherland family. But we also have to, this is a time for us to indict the system and really draw attention to the system. The system is failing us. The system is failing us left and right. It's not just here. It's in Greenville, right? Um, I'm going to go back to that, that Wapu article real quick. Because down here, there was like this real crazy story that I had no, no clue about. Right. It was here. While several critics laid out the problems with SLED's organizational structure, uh, the way it assigns officers and investigations, blah, 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 blah. Uh, for example, police officers broke into Ellis's house over some unpaid fines. So this is about, okay, so this is right here. In the police shooting death of Lori Jean Ellis, for example, police officers broke into Ellis's house over some unpaid fines. In, um, in an open container violation, then shot her to death after claiming she pointed and fired a rifle at them. The officers described hearing a loud bang and then seeing the muzzle flash and smoke. Look at this fucking fiction and smoke emanating from the barrel of, of Ellis's gun, right? Allegedly that she was allegedly holding. But as it turns out, the only gun in Ellis's home was a pellet gun, which was incapable of producing any loud bang or muzzle flash or smoke. Right? So that's what Sled Sled covered up that bullshit here. There was another one. Let me see. There was one that broke my heart. That broke my heart too. Uh here you go. And another police shooting. The shooting death of Ernest Russell uh Ernest Russell Jr. An anti excuse me, <clears throat> an anti drug task force conducted a no knock raid. You know how those go. A no knock raid on Russell's home for a suspended misdemeanor for suspended ah suspected misdemeanor gambling sorry about that y'all let me let me make it bigger for me <clears throat> that's too big okay for suspected let's go down here suspected misdemeanor gambling according to the officers they shot and killed russell only after announcing themselves multiple times and demanding that he drop the gun he was holding the officer who shot russell stated that they warned russell at least 14 times to drop his gun and show his hands in between he had time to scan the room he mentioned he mentioned seeing both the informant in the room and details from russell's gun but the body cam footage of the raid um, only about 4.5 seconds pass from the time the police enter the house until Russell is shot. 4.5 seconds, y'all. The audio, the audio picked up uh, just one warning, uh, warning instruction to Russell. This is all South Carolina. This is all South Carolina, y'all. I'm gonna click on this link real quick to see what, what, what who covered this. So it, this is his, okay. This is his. This is all his reporting. But those are just two incidents that happened, right? Starting from what, 2015, the Lori Jean Ellis killing and the Ernest, the Ernest Russell killing. Those are just two. So, so your lawyer, if you're defending, if you're defending, uh, not defending, if you're fighting for justice for, for, for Jamal Sutherland, I don't want to keep the still on his, on his picture. Let me, um, let me find something else. We could do with the mugshot. We can, we can let the mugshot rock. Um, if you're if, if if you're fighting for justice on behalf of this family, um, you need to know you need to be taking all of that into consideration, and you need this is your this is your chance. If not, take down the system. Look, I look. If not, take down the system. You have a hell of a case. You have a hell of an argument to make about the nature of law enforcement. Shit. If last summer wasn't enough ammunition, if last summer wasn't enough inspiration on how you could lead this case. I don't know what to tell you. I, I just don't know. Let me let me get back into the comments because I've been going on and on without reading the comments. Yeah. Sled is worthless. Sled is it's crazy. Right. Yeah, these cops and these lawyers are Kia, to your comment, these cops and these lawyers are profiting off of this this pain. And and what needs to be called out. And I have a lot of questions about Mark Pepper's leadership on this case. And somebody might say, Well, well, why would he mess up his own check? Cause he'll, he'll, cause he's getting sweetheart deals left and right. He's getting sweetheart deals left and right. He's, he's getting access to power. He's getting access to opportunities. Shit. You see, you see what happened? Like, so he avoided, I don't even know the, like the, the deep, deep details of this case. 
um, prominent Charleston attorney. Again, this is 2017, y'all. I'm bringing up old dirt. Um, a prominent Charleston attorney avoided a criminal drug uh, conviction Tuesday by pleading guilty to a lesser violation in connection with the recent drunk, oh, drunken driving arrest. Oh, he was drunk too? Mark Pepper, 38 at the time, had been jailed um, January 2nd on counts of driving under the influence, cocaine possession, and having an open container of alcohol. Uh, in an agreement with prosecutors about a week later, Pepper pleaded guilty to misdemeanor DUI and unlawful pos possessing a paraphernalia. Um, the paraphernalia violation carries i wonder if his black his black uh clients get get this type of uh leniency the paraphernalia violation carries uh only a civil penalty that by law will not give rise to any disability or legal disadvantage based on conviction of criminal offense whatever um he was fined fifteen hundred dollars wow the cocaine and alcohol container charges were dropped wow in a brief statement tuesday pepper accepting the state's plea uh Pepper said, accepting the state's plea offer gives me the ability to take responsibility for my actions. That's good to hear. And focus solely on my personal matters and require immediate attention. I will say this is a personal matter, but we're reading news. All right. The Hollywood resident was pulled over shortly after 2 a.m. when a Charleston County's deputy, sheriff's deputy, uh, said his car was weaving and speeding on Savannah Highway. Pepper did not uh, deny drinking alcohol, but declined. <clears throat> not funny. He denied drinking alcohol, but declined to do a field sobriety test. In his pants, the deputy reported finding a folded dollar bill with about a 0 0.1 grams of powder, thought to be cocaine. Pepper said that they were his brother's jeans. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Uh, I can't fit my brother's jeans, so I I don't know if I'll be able to ever use. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to use that as a defense. I ain't gonna be caught with no no cocaine. Um, I'm more of a I'm more um um. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, <laughs> I I, I want to insert the Killmonger meme. Is this your king? Like, as, as who in the who in the family? Did y'all do a Google search? Did y'all like just Google? Like, I'm gonna do. I love Google News. Like, I'll hit Google News. I need to see if you you making headlines. I need to see what. what but 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 more importantly, I want to know who the black person was that served this dude up to this family. Cause you played yourself and you playing this family on all seriousness. Y'all said what his brother his brother's jeans. Why would he be wearing I just And like let me tell you something. You my brother, you get caught, you get caught with a little cocaina. You be, I, I dare you to fucking mention my name. I dare you to put that shit on me. I will, I will if you, if you my sibling and you be like, yo, Tamika, Tamika, that's Tamika's jeans. I would fuck you up. I would two piece the shit out of you. If you ever threw me under the bus like that, if you ever did that shit to me, like that's just crazy. Anyway. <laughs> ain't nobody said that like, <laughs> that wasn't a setup what you mean kia set up oh my god he should be nowhere near he should be nowhere near this family i rest my case your honor who is mark pepper y'all and why is he why is he leading which 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 and, and, and let me let me switch let me just be serious why is he leading what what can arguably be one of the biggest uh biggest cases in charleston and then this is this is charleston's magic trick something major happens oh that's what i wanted to bring up Something major happens. This Charleston all over. Something major happens and no one says it. Everyone acts like, everyone acts like, oh, it's nothing. Oh, it's, it's, it's nothing. Right? Oh, it's just, it's, it's, huh? 
It happened. Like Charleston has a way of being like underreacting to things to make you feel like you're crazy. Y'all remember when I had that rant about why isn't anyone celebrating the Joe Biden election and all that stuff? Remember when I had that rant? So this is not like rant related like that, like that. Um, but Charleston has a way. See, I hate using this thing. Let me go back. Charleston has a way of of really let me blow this up. How much we can blow this up. So this is a this is a statement from uh the deputy uh the deputy police to uh, police chief um deputy Thompson. Uh this was released. Shout out to the followers who sent me this. So if you are a member of if you're a member of the CVB, uh you got this communication forwarded to you. So if you again the, the, the sort of power the power interests at play and it's even and, and even has some it has some effects on the jamal sutherland case cvb I'm, and that's not a reach cvb the charleston police department north charleston police department the, the solicitor's office the sheriff's department right and, and of course um north i said north charleston north charleston those are those are the power structures really at play here and sled right so here was some communication that was floated out uh, remember yesterday, they had, not yesterday, day before yesterday, they had that press conference and the whole to do city council scrambling, trying to get all the black people to say, you know, the stand up at a press conference and say, hey, we unite around peace, yada, yada, yada. Right. All right. So good afternoon. All right. If you did not see the press conference today, again, that was two days ago. I wanted to make sure that everyone was aware that we have made significant preparations for the, the Charleston business district, right? I don't know why he did CBD, but Charleston, it's like, a, it's like, why would you use that? But anyway, preparation for the Charleston uh, business district in the coming weekend and following weekends to address the large crowds and crime. A lot of bro crime is happening, y'all. A lot of bro crime is happening, right? They'll show you some black mug shots, but they're not showing you other stuff either, right? All right. A few of the significant changes um, that will be made, and, and I, I don't know if I said this on, I don't think I read this yesterday. So between 6 p.m. and 3 a.m., did I say this yesterday? I don't think so. Shout out to the people who just followed. Shout out to the followers this hour. A um, few significant changes that will be made between 6 p.m. and 3 a.m. on Thursday through Saturday. We will have um, <clears throat> we will have the meters bagged and no parking between Mary Street and Spring Street at nine p and at 9 p.m. Uh, we will convert King Street to a one way street. Right now, the part I want to get to. The part I want to get to. Let me see. The first one. Here we go. Oh. This part, right? So they're gonna they're gonna do all this thing to make y'all feel safer. This part right here that Dustin wrote, as you might have already seen today in the local news, interest in the death of Jamal Sutherland at the Charleston County Detention Center continues to gain momentum. We continue to monitor intel. Hi, because that's what they're doing. Hi, monitor intel, right? <laughs> all right we continue to monitor intel and make adjustments as needed as we have done during the election that's why i brought that up the Der the Derek chauvin verdict right and the department is prepared to activate all officers and move to emergency operations if needed right P please feel free to i want y'all to feel free if y'all have any questions i'm encouraging y'all to go ahead and um i got some questions y'all got questions for dustin I'm encouraging you. I'm gonna leave that up there, right there. Kid, what you say? In there, Mark Pepper has always been a black uh, pain advocate. He did some um, same thing in high school. I'm sure. I'm sure he's comfortable around black people, right? He would make friends with all the black kids, right? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, what's this? Um, let me see. I shouldn't say advocate. I got you. I got you though. He's cozy with the black community, right? Um, and Evelyn, to see your earlier point, I don't think boys and men share pants either. I don't think they share clothes. I, I used to steal my brother's clothes when we were like the same height and whatever, real quick in like eighth grade. But there were, usually it was his sneakers and like maybe a fly sweatshirt he had. That's it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I want y'all to hit up Dustin Thompson when y'all get a chance. Um, go ahead and hit that up. What is that? 843 Email address Thompson D at Charleston dash SE dot gov. 
it up, Dusty. I got questions. So, so, so when I, when I was, when I'm the, the larger point I was making, right? I, I didn't just bring this up to be funny. The larger point I'm making about this, these, this communication, Charleston has a way to make you feel like you're crazy and you don't even realize how many forces are at play keeping um making sure that they suppress um uh, natural like reactions to things like there are things already being communicated so i could only imagine there were so many businesses who read the communications that came out around not just the derek chauvin verdict but the the communication that came out uh before the election and how how people business all those black squares all those businesses that say hey i'm liberal i'm 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 black lives matter i'm sure they all tamped down their reactions to things and that's the city we live in we live in in a city that suppresses um, individual expression, a city that suppresses black political expression, um, and, and 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 also now they're li they're literally trying to infringe on your First Amendment right, um, and they're making and making it so hard, so hard. I don't know if this um, I'm not going to go to it, but there's there's communication, there's lines in the communication that suggest that they're not even allowing people to protest. My whole thing too, why this is how this is going to backfire. Charleston ain't just a thumb. Charleston ain't just the peninsula, y'all, right? What about Avondale? What about Maryville? What What about, you know, what about the Oak Forest area, right? What about West Ashley? What about parts of James Island? Shit, what about parts of Johns Island that y'all damn near annex if not already? Like, what about those parts? Y'all don't care about people. Y'all care about these the, the, the millions of dollars that's down here that's got you by your neck. CVB got them by their neck. And 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 this is who, this is who lawyers like Mark Pepper, this is who they're never going to fuck up that check. They're never going to fuck up that bag, that access. They're never going to stop that access to that funnel of money and resources and power, prestige, privilege. Y'all know I love alliteration. Y'all, they never going to fuck that bag up. And that's what, that's what, that's all the fact, like if, if I could, if I could draw a diagram, again, the city of North Charleston, the city of Charleston, CPD, North Charleston PD, um, the CVB, um, the solicitor's office, SLED, the sheriff's department, these are all the principal players in this whole thing. And then you got the, the lawyers who are supposedly acting in the best interest of the family, but are low key trying to break deals and, and play it both ways and play both sides. If I got it wrong, anyone knows anyone intimately involved. If I got it wrong, prove me wrong. You don't got to talk to me, but prove me wrong. Because to me, I'm seeing a whole bunch of conflicts of interest. I'm seeing a man who's been cozy with Al Khan and a man that's been cozy with the solicitor now is, is, is supporting a family after the, the system has killed their son and you and you and they're being rushed. This family's being rushed into mediation with the with the uh, another principal, the county of Charleston, who's already said we're capping it. We ain't giving them more than a million dollars. As if there is a price that you could put on on your loved one's life, but let's just say for for perspective, since Brian Hicks put it in the article, George Floyd family's got twenty seven million. Shit, Walter Scott's family got six million. There's a blood on a lot of people's hands right now. Some he's trying to get out ahead of his because when the when the other civil suits go down, city of Charleston's going to catch it going to catch a stray that behavioral health uh, city center is going to catch a stray if they've got if if their lawyers worth their salt there's going to be a lot of lawsuits this is a huge case this could be this could have been a sick this is is a pivotal case and, and and just like charleston in true charleston form they're suppressing it so that people don't feel how severe and how significant this case is but we're working on things. Shout out to all the organizers who are banding together. Low Country Action Committee. Fernando's in there helping out. Quadro's leading up the, a lot of this work. Uh, Letitia from the Black Liberation Fund. Um, shout out Jazz. Shout out just everyone. Shout out um, Wanda who checked in from Georgia for Black Voters Matter. Shout out to April Richardson from Black Voters Matter at South Carolina. Well, a lot of us are working on things and we ain't rushing to the microphone because we're trying to craft the right sentiment and the right, the right statements and get this popping. So we're going to find, we're, we're going to fight for justice for, for Jamal 
our, our fighting for justice for Jamal is not, it does not work in opposition to the family. Y'all get y'all civil situation straight. We working about, we're working to, to change the system. We're working to transform the system, to dismantle the system. Y'all not going to be able to pit us against each other. Us fighting for justice and dismantling the system, it has nothing. That's actually, we actually trying to help the family and other families who unfortunately will, will have the same situation happen because this will happen again. This will happen again. And somebody's got to say, hey, no, stop. This can't happen. And we got to look closer into Thicket. I know I spent a lot of time on Mark Pepper because I think what he's doing to the family is, is, is really, to me, really fucked up. And I don't think he's doing his job the way he could be doing it. But I know we need to, we need to pay attention to uh, Thicket, Officer Thicket, who had a history of violence and strangling other other um, inmates out El Cannon. Oh, we not we not done off that. Y'all see, I've been posting about her the the names of these officers on on uh, for a minute. So is it Hall or Ho, uh, Huel? I can't pronounce the name right now. H O U L E, Officer H O U L E, and Officer Thicket. Oh, we winning on David. Oh, excuse me, winning on Mark Pepper. But we we gonna go in on that. We gonna go in on that for sure. We're going to go in on that, that history of violence. But we have to we have to start looking at some of these principal players and how they fucking this shit up. I can't even focus on the cops because we got double dealers out here not acting in the best interest of the family. I can't even focus on the cops because I got to sit here and let y'all know, like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Right. So let me read the chat before I say bye. Um, where can we read that letter? Oh, I can, I can, um, I'll post it in my stories on Instagram, but I'll try to, um, I'll make it like a, um, accessible Google drive. If you're talking about the, um, this letter. Yeah. I'll put it on, I'll put it in Instagram and I'll, I'll put a link there so you can like swipe up and read it in like an accessible Google drive, um, a Google file. I'll do that. The officers, uh, themselves, uh, the officers, themselves pockets need to be hit absolutely and that's the other this the other part that mark pepper's fumbling dude you got you got tim scott you got kyber you got even lindsey graham all weighing in about criminal justice reform and you fumbling like this you not making a greater case like like you got a chance to make a greater case to engage real power brokers on on this issue kyber preferably even though he on some shit that qualifying immunity stuff like whatever but like Clyburn specifically right yeah I don't know D I don't know why you wrote pepper uh oh super violent okay anyway I'm gonna sign off now um lot to unpack we're gonna get back to law enforcement um I thought it was I thought it was appropriate to talk about who's advising the family because I don't think this family's gonna get justice with the current leadership that they have at the helm. That's my personal opinion. Um, but hopefully we can fight for justice. Yeah. The low ball offer. It, it, it's disgusting, Jessica. Good morning. Yeah. And I and I think they're just posturing. Please, please, y'all can't cap shit. Y'all can't cap shit. Y'all gonna have to come up off that. Y'all gonna have to come up off that money. Cause y'all done killed this boy, and and some he ain't helping y'all county. Some he ain't helped y'all yesterday. Some he ain't do you no favors yesterday. Yep, qualified immunity needs to go. Some he ain't do y'all no favors yesterday at all. He did himself some favors, but that's it. All right, let me go ahead on. I'll talk to y'all later. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. We're gonna keep trying, keep going. Xfinity was out here all weekend, all day yesterday. Look like we're doing okay.